The following is a live presentation of Retro Sports Network, home of the champions of the past, present, and or future. Good afternoon. My name is Ron Juckett. Welcome to the program for this Pi Day. Hopefully you'll have some pie today. Good, nummy, apple, banana cream, chocolate, cherry, whatever, pie. Because it's March 14th and you need to carb up for St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. We got a good one for you here, as we often try to have. The Seattle Mariners are really the surprise of the American League West. They are 25 and 21. And the reason why we're a couple minutes late going on live on Twitch is because never made the ballpark for the Kingdom, not thinking that they would need to be on. But yet, here we are, and so and here they are. They are in third place in the American League West between, uh, actually, may, or maybe fourth, I'd have to look, between Oakland, Minnesota, and Kansas City. So they are playing quite well. Whether they can hold on to it is another story. It really depends on what Oakland decides to do. If Oakland can run away with it, then no one's going to catch him. But the longer that Oakland hangs around 500, teams like the Mariners are, you know, capable of doing it. And when you see their lineup, you will understand why. Scott Bankhead gets the call for the Mariners this afternoon. The Yankees are 25-19 and 19 in the lead car of a six-team train in the American League East. They get the ageless Tommy John making his ninth start of the year, and somehow, in some way, the ageless one is 6-1 and one on the replay so far. One of the reasons why the Yankees are in the position they are. At some point in the near future, the American League kind of shifts to mostly divisional battles, and then we'll see just who can kind of separate themselves out in that AL East race. And remember, at some point, the Red Sox are going to catch fire because John McNamara will be gone and their lineups will certainly benefit them. But right now, it is, again, three games between first and sixth. So the surprising Mariners and the New York Yankees do battle on a Thursday right here on Retro Sports Network. As Retro Sports Network presents Major League Replay 1988. Today, from the Kingdom in Seattle, Washington, it is the Seattle Mariners and the New York Yankees. And today's game is brought to you by DigitalDice.com, the best darn podcast on the web for your sports simulation and replay needs. Find us today on Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, or wherever else fine podcasts are listed. And again, it is the Angeles Tommy John versus Scott Bankhead who's making his third start of the year. And Mike Pagliarulo is flying high right now for the Yankees. He's got a 10-game hitting streak. Play ball. So the Yankees doing what they need to do. And that did not do what I needed it to do. How about that? We'll do that again. How you doing, Mike in the truck? That's what I need to do. And then that. Okay. Let's show you the Yankee lineup. Nothing like having to wait 30 seconds for hats. Yeah, that's true. I'll take my penny, though, because that's about what I get. Ricky Henderson will lead off and left for the Yankees. Willie Randolph having a good year. At second, will play second. Lionel Washington in center will hit third. Jack Clark is the DH. He'll clean up. Mike Pagliarulo in his 10-game hitting streak will bat fifth at third. Mr. May, Dave Winfield continues to shine and right. He'll bat sixth. Gary Ward at first, not Don Mattingly, will play first. He'll bat seventh. Rafael Santana at short will go eighth. And Joel Skinner gets a call behind the plate. He'll go ninth. Bankhead, if he goes right, can go eight, 115 pitches or so. Brantley, a four and a two and left for the Seattle Mariners as we set their defense for you. I almost said Seahawks. Henry Cotto, a four and a five in center. Wilson, a five and a ten and right. That's a reverse Woolworth if I ever saw one. Jim Presley is a four at third. Ray Quinonez, a five at second. 
Harold Reynolds at 10 at, or at short for Quinones. Reynolds at 10 at second. Alvin Davis at four at first. Dave Alley an eight and a six behind the plate. And Bankhead is a two on the mound. He's 2-0 and oh on the year, making his third start and earned an average of .51. He's 25, fastball at 90, and a fly ball plus pitcher. His two starts have gone against other American League East teams. Six days ago, a complete game 6-1 win over the Orioles. Nine innings, 142 pitches, five hits. A run it was earned. He walked two and struck out six. So 17 and two-thirds for Scott, eight hits. A run it was earned. Three walks and eight strikeouts. So all that out of the way, Ricky Henderson at 309, no homers, and 10 RBI. Bankhead starts this one off. Fly ball to Cotto. No, popped up. Quinones. And Ray will make the catch one out. Weather, of course, not a factor. We're indoors. Willie Randolph at 292. Six doubles, no homers, and 14 RBI. Line drive to Quinones, and Ray is there. Leaps and makes the catch two out. That's his ninth great play of the year. And his fielding percentage... And the replay is 969 compared to 963 in real life. Claude L. Washington, the ageless center fielder for the Yankees at 290, three doubles and 13 RBI. Hope you're having a good Thursday. There's a base hit, left center field. He goes the opposite way with it. Brantley will throw it back in. Quinones. Made a good play before and could not leap. So he's made nine great plays and eight poor plays. Which means it all comes out in the wash, pretty much. Here's Jack Clark. Jack at 257 home runs and 28 RBI. Bankhead throws to first. Davis goes back to tag him, but Claudell is there. In the... The throw goes down to second, and Washington is out trying to steal. So how about that? They throw him out. So it goes 2-6 on the caught stealing, and the Mariners get out of it. First pitch, and again, it looked like the outfield was shifting into to left center, but it was a strong throw from Valley down to Reynolds. Half an inning in the books, no runs, a hit, and the Yankees get a runner thrown out. It's no score. Tommy John is 45 years old. He is 6-1. and one. He's making his ninth start of the replay. And with an earned run average of 257. That's seventh in ERA and fourth in wins. For a guy that cranks up a fastball at 81. And you would think that he would be more than just a ground ball pitcher in action PC. I mean, he is the king of getting grounders. He last pitched against Oakland. I believe we did that game. 5-3 to three win. Six innings. Seven is his season long. He did that, did that against the White Sox. 95 pitches against Oakland. Six hits. Two runs. Both earned a home run. A walk and two strikeouts in the win. His last loss was against the Twins. On April 20th, his only loss of the year. 49 innings for Tommy. 48 hits, 18 runs, 14 earned. Three homers, he's walked 10. And struck out 18. Here's how the Mariners will line up. Henry Cotto in center will lead off. Henry has good speed. He won't be their center fielder much longer. How you doing, Big Dave? Glenn Wilson in right will bat second. Alvin Davis at first goes third. Mickey Brantley, I knew it wasn't Jeff, cleans up and left. Ken Phelps, future New York Yankee, will bat fifth and is the DH. Elvis's cousin Jim Presley at third will bat sixth. Dave Valley behind the plate goes seventh. Ray Quinones at short will go eighth. And Harold Reynolds at second batting ninth. Tommy John again, a six-inning pitcher. He needs to keep the ball down. 
Ricky Henderson is a six and four and left as we set the Yankee defense for you. Claudel Washington a five and a four in center. Dave Winfield a seven and seven in right. Talia Rulo a five at third. Santana a six at short. Willie Randolph a seven at second. Gary Ward, not Don Mattingly, a five at first. Joel Skinner, a five and a three behind the plate. And Tommy John is a seven with a 917 fielding percentage. Henry Cotto at 259, six homers and 26 RBI. And he hits a ground ball to Santana. Raphael on the pit, makes a diving stop, throws the first one out. So Santana with his 10th great play, the 8th poor. So he's two to the good. D. Scott Howard, home game for him. You know, for old retired dude like Scotty, you certainly are busy. I saw your schedule. Goodness. Here's Glenn Wilson, 252, a homer and 17 RBI. In the shallow center, Washington running in. Claudel almost on the infield makes the catch two away. So here's Alvin Davis. Alvin has struggled. 217, four homers and 14 RBI. This is already game 47 for the Mariners and game 45 for the Yankees. And next Thursday, we'll hit Memorial Day and technically hit the quarter pole on the 88 season. Davis, ground ball to John, who throws to Ward, and that is an out. So after one inning, no runs, no hits, and no errors, it's the Yankees nothing, the Mariners nothing. So Jack Clark again, 257 homers and 28 RBI. He was at the plate when Washington was thrown out trying to steal second. Line drive to Presley. One out. So here's Pagliarulo. Mike has a 10-game hitting streak. Hasn't really improved his average that much. He's hitting 213. Five homers and 25 RBI. Right center. Wilson going back. And Pagliarulo hits that one off the wall. He's got two. He's going to hold right there with the double his eighth of the year. He got a good piece of that one. And hit that off the scoreboard in right center field. So a lot like the Metrodome, this, that wall covering up the Seahawks seats. In fact, I'd imagine this drawing is the same as the Metrodome, except for the bleachers are a little bit different. The Kingdome, of course, built for both baseball, football. Got a pretty couple important basketball games over the years there, too. Here's Dave Winfield, 301, eight homers, and 34 RBI. That's up the middle pass. Reynolds for a base hit. Palarulo will hold. So Pags on third, Winfield on first for Gary Ward, hitting 310, a homer, and four RBI. How you doing, John? So the Yankees have three hits and nothing to show for it yet. But there's one out in the second, and they are threatening to get one here off of Scott Bankhead. Line, or line drive left field, Brantley out of play. An interesting cookie cutter where the bullpens are on the field. So far, so good, John is. Count is 0-2 to Gary Ward. Bankhead's pitch. Got him. An 0-2 fastball swung on a miss. So two out for Santana. Raphael at 248, three homers and 11 RBI. I would venture to guess that the kingdom is not Patrick Ewing's favorite place on earth. Santana up the middle. It'll be Quinonez, snap throw to Davis, and the Yankees are going to get nothing out of this. How about that? No runs, two hits. They've left on two, and after an inning and a half, there's still no score. So Brantley, Phelps, and Presley to face Tommy John. Mickey at 262, six homers. 
and 24 RBI. And that's a base hit in the right center field. Winfield will cut it off. That brings up Ken Phelps. Scott, you watched a lot of the original Sounders soccer in the Kingdom and also some NCAA tournament games. You weren't there when they lost to Villanova, were you? Of course, the Kingdom is now the home of whatever they call the CenturyLink. Is that the name of, of where the Sounders play now? Correctly, I should say the Seahawks. But it's a pro soccer crowd here, so we'll go with Sounders. Lefty versus lefty, pitch to Phelps. Gets away from Skinner, but Brantley wasn't far enough off. So a 2-2 two -two count now. TJ throws to first, and Brantley is back. Missed that one, okay. Of course, when the Supersonics won the championship in 79... They played their games here at the Kingdom. There's a ground ball to Randolph. They might get two. Santana for one to throw to Ward. And they will turn two, four, six, three. Two out for Presley. Jim at 265, six homers and 19 RBI. To Randolph. Over to first. And that'll do it. So the Mariners do not score. They get a hit, and they get erased on the double play. After two, it's the Yankees. Nothing, Seattle, nothing. So Skinner, Henderson, and Randolph, 9-1-2 and two to face Bankhead him the third. Skinner at 232, four doubles and eight RBI. I sent you a while ago someone back in the 90s, back when, you know, you had to carry a camera on your shoulder, did part of the video tour or the t tourist tour of the kingdom. Fascinating place. Pitch to Skinner. Fly ball, right field. Wilson moving over and will make the catch. Ricky Henderson's 0 for 1. Bank had 29 pitches, 9 batters, 2 in the third. 3 hits and a strikeout. Now, Scott, he'd be able to fill this one in. When Seattle got the expansion pilots in 1969, they played at Sixth Stadium. I don't, was the Kingdom on the board yet? The pilots moved to Milwaukee in spring training in 70. And Seattle got an expansion team for 77 after this place was built. That's going to be pass Reynolds up the middle for a base hit. So Ricky is on, and we'll see if he can turn that into a double. Fourth hit for the Yankees, one out for Randolph is 0 for 1. Throw to first, and Ricky's back. Ricky has 33 steals on the year. Stays put. Randolph drops one down, foul. Oh, no, fair ball. And it's in the center field. Davis had it. He picked it up. I thought that was foul, and that's an error. So, Ricky, I don't know why you would do this. It's going to hold it second. Well, so Randolph dropped one down. Davis trying to rush it and get two because but you're not going to double up Ricky and he threw the ball into center field so Reynolds couldn't handle the throw it went into left and Davis instead of having the one out got nobody so Henderson on second Randolph on first and here's Claudel Washington who singled his first time up Scotty says, watching basketball from the third level of the kingdom was like looking at the X's and O's of a chalkboard. I bet it was. It's always interesting to see how they lay basketball courts into domes. And with the NCAAs coming up, can you imagine paying all that money to get a ticket? I don't know where the Final Four is this year. But, yep, 
and you get the best seat in the house and you're looking right at the replay board. In the center, Cotto will make the catch. Henderson and Randolph go back. Will Ricky tag? No, he will not. And there's two out. No firm plans for a new stadium in 69 was part of the problem for the pilots. Yep. It wasn't uncommon for expansion teams to play in minor league parks or teams that relocated. I mean, that was the case with the Braves when they moved to Milwaukee. The Twins when they moved from Washington. The Rangers when they moved from Washington. Candlestick was on the board when the Giants moved from New York. And so, same with Seattle when they moved or when they came in the league in 69. Jack Clark is 0 for 1. Struck him out. So Bankhead works around it. The error, no runs a hit, and the Yankees are left on four after two and a half, no score. So Valley, Quinones, and Reynolds, 7, 8, 9 here to face John in the third. Dave hitting 250, three homers, and eight RBI. In the left center, Washington will run it down. One out. The Kingdom, on a television standpoint, or from a television standpoint, looked really good as a football stadium. I'm trying to think, before the 95 playoffs, how often they got on TV that you could watch at a decent hour from the East Coast. And the answer is not very often. Quinones at 250, a home run and 11 RBI. Ground ball to Randolph. Willie coming way in. Throws to Ward for the out. Two away. When you'd get the sporting news, or when I got the sporting news in the 80s, you'd sit there and read the box scores and the summaries. Harold Reynolds, by the way, at 272, three homers and 13 RBI. And you'd see the attendance in Seattle. 6,000, 7,000, 8,000. There's a ground ball pass Randolph for a base hit. So a two-out single. It was the emergence of that 95 team for the Mariners. As Henry Cotto steps up, he's 0 for 1. Tommy John opening 9, 31 pitches. Two and two-thirds and two hits. That cemented the Mariners as Seattle's team. Throw to first. Having Ken Griffey Jr. certainly helped with that. And Edgar Martinez and John Olerud and later on. And, of course, we got them that World Series last year in 2001. Pitch to Cotto. In the center field, Washington will range over. Claudel is there, and that will retire the side. No runs, a hit, no errors. After three, no score. So Pagliarulo now has an 11-game hitting streak. Winfield and Ward to face Bankhead here in the fourth. Pags doubled his first time up. In the right, Wilson, one out. Winfield singled his first time up. Second verse to Wilson is the same as the first. Two out. Gary Ward struck out his first time up. And that's in the left center. Cotto chasing. He'll let it bounce. They'll give up the hit. To save a base. So two out for Rafael Santana, who's 0 for 1. Got him! So after three and a half, the Yankees get a hit and leave on five, all told. After three and a half, no score. So a little more room on the train for the Yankees as we look at the standings here. A half game in front of Milwaukee, a game in front of Toronto, a game and a half in front of Cleveland. Detroit and Boston are now four back. In the West, the Mariners are in fourth, three and a half behind the surprising Kansas City Royals. 
and the Twins and the A's. In the National League, the Mets are starting to separate out from the pack. Two and a half over Pittsburgh. And uh, don't look at the Dodgers, Scotty. Cincinnati, 30 and 15. Second best record in all of baseball behind the Mets. We got leaders in this game. You know what? Ricky Henderson, that's about it. Wow. It'll be Wilson, Davis, and Brantley to face John here in the fourth. Len is 0 for 1. There's a base hit right center field. Winfield will cut it off. I am. Hope you are too, Jeff. Third hit for the Mariners. Here's Davis. Wilson, not a threat to steal. Struck him out. A rare strikeout from Tommy John. A 1-2 change. Got him. So here's Brantley. Mickey singled his first time up. Base hit right center field. Winfield will cut it off, and the Mariners threaten here in the fourth. Here's Phelps. Ken is 0 for 1. That, I think, comes from High Heat 2001. Someone turned those beautiful pictures or illustrations into pictures. And it looks really nice. It also is the same one they pretty much use for the Metrodome. Ground ball award. Gary, what's he going to do? Santana for one. Gary gets back to the bag, and Phelps is doubled off. So 3-6-3, three, three, and we've played four. No one can score in this one. Shall I say it's scoreless in Seattle? After four, zero, zero. Skinner, Anderson, and Randolph to face Bankhead here in the fifth. Joel is 0 for 1. Pitch to Skinner. Ground ball to third. Presley's got it. Throws to first. One out. So here's Ricky Henderson. Ricky, one for two. Bankhead, 64 pitches, 18 batters, four and a third, five hits, and three strikeouts. Chopper to short. Quinonez is deep in the hole. Throws to Davis. And Ricky is retired. Two away for Willie Randolph, who's 0 for 1. Looking at my... Microsoft doodle of the day on Windows 11 and it is a piece of cherry pie on this 14th day of March pie day struck him out that's four for Bankhead halfway home no score You join the slate, you haven't missed much of anything. Yankees have five hits, Seattle four hits in an error. Mike Pagliarulo now has an 11-game hitting streak. He doubled in the second. Tommy John, a four-hitter with a strikeout. And Scott Bankhead, a five-hitter with four strikeouts. And Gary Ward has made six put out, putouts at first. Again, busy with the ground ball pitcher on the mound. Presley, Valley, and Quinones to face TJ in the fifth. Jim is 0 for 1. Line drive to third. Pagliarulo, one out. Brings up Dave Valley, who's 0 for 1. Ball four. Next Thursday, Memorial Day doubleheader. Tommy missed on four pitches, by the way. Here's Quinones. Oh, can't bunt. 0 for 1. 
It'll be a New York, New York special. Dodgers and Mets from Shea, and, a, and followed by the Yankees and A's from Oakland. And Mr. Mr. Howard will let me know what order he wants those in. Right center field, back goes Winfield to the wall, and Quinonez finds it. Valley's going to round third. He's going to be waved in. Winfield has a good arm. Quinonez will go to third. Randolph goes to the plate, and Valley is in there. So a one nothing game, Quinonez goes to third. That's his 13th double of the year, and the Mariners break through one nothing. So that'll bring up Harold Reynolds. Harold singled his first time up. Lumen Field is the soccer field to Seattle now. They do share it with the Seahawks. Single game attendance record, 69,000. 274. That is for the entire history of the stadium, not just the NFL team. That was the MLS Cup final in 2019. Russell Wilson making a trip to Seattle this year? So Reynolds, one for one with a single. First run of the game is in. Harold. Left center field. That should score Quinonez. Washington an average arm. Quinonez tags and will try to go home. A throw to the plate's a good one. Skinner, not in time. 2 nothing Seattle. He got the tag, but it was too late. So the Mariners plate two here in the fifth. Tommy John, 18 batters, four and two thirds, 66 pitches, five hits. A walk and a strikeout. Cotto is 0 for two. Base hit right field. Winfield will throw it back in. Six hits for Seattle, five hits for New York. Glenn Wilson is one for two. Cotto a threat to steal. I wonder if Mattingly is hurt. I'm trying to figure out the logic of why you would go with Kerry Ward over Don Mattingly. Throw to first, and Cotto is back. We're going to chance it. Hit and run is on. Wilson swings. Right center field. There's two out, so it really doesn't matter what Cotto does now. Winfield calls for it. And does he get it? Or did that drop? That might have dropped. It does! Randolph and Winfield couldn't get on the same page, and it dropped! Cotto scampers to third. Wilson with a Christmas present of a single. Runners on the corners, two out for Alvin Davis. Oh my goodness gracious, Buffy St. Marie. Alvin is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Tommy John deals to Randolph. Willie's got it. Goes to Santana for the easy out, and that'll do it. But the Mariners score two on three hits and no errors. And after five, Seattle two, New York nothing. So Washington, Clark, and Pagliarulo to face Bankhead here in the sixth. Oh, the stadium event record was set last year by somebody by the name of Kelsey. Oh, no. Taylor Swift, I'm sorry. And then only for a week until Ed Sheeran at 77,286. I had a 286 computer. The Mariners are, yeah, how about the Mariners? They were what, about a 500 team in 88? In that division, most years, that would get you into the last week. Again, it really will depend on what the A's do going forward. Claudel is one for two. He's two for three now. He punches that one into right field for a base hit. It's already thrown out trying to steal once. Jack Clark is 0 for 2 with the strikeout. Jack 
Gets away from Valley and Washington will take the 90. Wild pitch on an 0-2 fastball. And if you take the 90 in Seattle, you just run into the five. A ball and two strikes. Pitch to Clark. Center field. Cotto makes the catch. Washington goes back. They're going to try it. Cotto has a decent arm. It's a good throw to Presley. It's close. They got him. How about that? A double play. So 8-5 on the DP. And it's the second time today Claudio Washington is thrown out on the bases. He was caught stealing after his first single. And then Cotto with a good throw. Had a 35% chance to get him. And he did. Pagliarulo, 11-game hitting streak, one for two with a double. Bankhead deals. Struck him out. That's five for Scott, and we played five and a half. No runs a hit. The Yankees have left on five, but none this time around. After five and a half, Seattle two, New York nothing. So Brantley, Phelps, and Presley, probably the last inning for TJ. Mickey has two singles. He's two for two. Left field. Henderson is there. Ricky in the corner. One out. So here's Ken Phelps. Ken is 0 for 2. Ball 4. So John lost him. 3-1 curve. Low and in. Brings up Presley who's 0 for 2. Ground ball to Ward. Gary takes it to the bag at first. Phelps, are they going to get him? They do. So Ward took the easy out at first and realized that the runner was slow. He threw it to Randolph, not for the force, but for the tag. And that is a double play to end the inning, a 3-4 double play. You don't see that very often after six. No runs, no hits, no errors. Seattle 2 nothing. 68-93. Dick Williams will be fired and retired on June 8th, so a couple weeks, and replaced by Jim Snyder. Well, they are well overplaying then. This isn't a bad team. Dave Winfield, one for two. The New York press would be nonplussed with this performance. Winfield in the center. Cotto coming in. Rides a swing. Makes the catch. One out. Ow. I hit my finger on the table. Gary Ward is one for two with a single. Get him. Got him on a 2-2 changeup. So Bankhead has struck out six. He has pretty good control. 135 real-life innings and 102 strikeouts to only 38 walks. Santana is 0 for 2. One of those is a strikeout. Bankhead deals. Ground ball to Davis. Alvin has it. Takes it to the bag. Stretch time to nothing. Seattle. Chammer1031 is our latest follower. Thank you very much. Sounds like a radio station, doesn't it? Bay Valley walked and scored. He's 0 for 1. They were 23 and 33 when Williams was fired. I can't imagine he was a very popular player manager. Pitch to Valley as John starts the seventh. Ground ball, third base side of the rubber. Tommy throws to first. One 
No, it's an error. So Valley's going to reach this John's throw. What's that throw going to do? Did that go in the dugout? Yes, it does. It goes down the line. Ward fishes it out by the bullpens, and Valley's on second. So I'll bring up Quinones, who really can't bunt, who doubled. He's one for two, drove home a run in the fifth, and scored. To second, Randolph throws to first. Ward is there. Valley moves on to third. One out. Yep, Yankees fired Martin for the last time this season. I think Pinella finished the year, right? And, of course, Billy passed away Christmas night, 89, and started four great years of bad Yankee teams. Here's Harold Reynolds. He's one for one. When the Yankees came out of the wilderness in the mid-90s, they came out with a vengeance. But this little kid in New England enjoyed that run of Yankee baseball from 89 to 93 for sure. <laughs> Pitch to Reynolds. Harold hits a ground ball to third. Pagliarulo's going to go to the plate. Skinner and Valley are going to make some contact. And Valley is going to be out. It doesn't really matter that Reynolds reaches. So it's a rundown. Palarulo to Skinner, and Skinner got the tag in there. Tagged him right on the chest. There was no question about it, and there's two out. So Reynolds will reach on the fielder's choice. 5-2. Brings up Cotto, who's one for three. Tommy John, 27 batters, 94 pitches. Six and two-thirds, seven hits, two walks, and a strikeout. Throw to first, and Reynolds is back. Fly ball, left field. Henderson, out of play. Of course, it doesn't help the Yankees that this is Ricky's last year in New York. He would go back to Oakland as part of that championship team. Line drive to Randolph, and that'll do it. Mariners do not score. They leave on a runner. No runs, no hits, and the Yankees make an error. And after seven, it's 2 nothing Seattle. So Skinner, Henderson, and Randolph. Bankhead throwing a shutout, but I doubt he finishes this. Fly ball, left field, Brantley. And a goat got it. Goats are allowed in Seattle. No questions asked. The count is two and two to Skinner. Bankhead rears back and throws. Struck him out. That's seven for Scott. Uh, two, two fastball. One out for Ricky, who is one for three. So 27 batters deep for Bankhead. Seven in the third innings. 106 pitches. Six hits, seven strikeouts. Ricky, slow ground ball to Quinones, has to rush in for it, and Ricky's just too fast. Quinones eats it. So of the seven hits the Yankees have, Ricky has two of them. Willie Randolph is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Now, we did 85, and the Blue Jays won it. Throw to Davis, and Ricky is back. But you'd have to think, because I don't think anyone in our replay was beating St. Louis, that if the Yankees had won the division at any point in the four years that Ricky is there, that they probably go to the World Series. To third, Presley. Reynolds for one. Ricky doesn't get the slide down in time, and they go around the horn. Five, four, three. After seven and a half, no runs, a hit, no errors. It's the Mariners two, the Yankees nothing. So let's see how long they leave TJ in for. This is tied for his longest appearance of the year at seven innings. Glenn Wilson is two for three. He is single twice. 
Ground ball to Randolph. Over to Ward. One out. The reason why I say that, I don't know if they beat the Mets in 86. Alvin Davis is over three with a strikeout. But with Ricky able to set the table, especially in a short series, it is such a decisive advantage because essentially with Ricky, I mean, there were other speedsters of the era, Vince Coleman, but Vince wasn't a good table setter. I mean, the best two table setters in baseball in this era, Ricky Henderson in New York and Tim Raines in Montreal. TJ stays. Davis up the middle, pass Randolph for a base hit. So a one-out single for Davis. Let's see what they do with John. Mickey Brantley, two for three. He has single twice. Mariners finally got above 591 under, Jennifer, under manager Jim Lefebvre. And the slogan, I'm a believer, believer, and I saw his face. Of course, the M's didn't renew his contract, and he moved to other clubs. <laughs> he got it right eventually, Scotty. Brantley, as we said, two for three. He is single twice. To short, this might be two. Santana to Randolph for one, and Brantley's going to reach because the throw is just not made. So good slide, Brantley on for Phelps, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. So 87, as good as the Cardinals were. Remember, they didn't beat the Twins. And this year, you know, I mean, look, we got six teams within four games. You just never know. Throw to first, Brantley back. Two out. Tommy John making his longest appearance of the year. Center field. Washington striding in. Will make the catch and that'll do it. We've played eight. No runs. One hit and no errors. Yanks need two to tie. Three to go ahead. So Washington, Clark, and Pagliarulo. Claudel two for three. Bankhead will get a base runner. The Mariners... Trying to win to go 26 and 21. Up the middle, Reynolds has it, wraps it up, throws to first. What out? Jack Clark is 0 for 3. And if the Yankees got to the World Series in that era, I think it had taken all the pressure in the world off of Dave Winfield, who despite being saddled with the nickname Mr. May, had some pretty good years for the Yankees. Clark is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Fly ball, left field, back goes Brantley to the wall, and it's a one-run game. That's off the wall. I thought that was gone. That nicked the top of the wall, and Clark has his fifth double of the year. And we won't mess around anymore. Ooh, there's no closer. <laughs> Here comes Michael. Because he's good. He's good. He's really, really good. He's going to make his second attempt to get his first save. He's 24 years old. Throws the fastball at 93 and a fly ball plus pitcher. Making his 20th appearance of the year. He has lost his last three decisions, including one in New York, on the 17th. He pitched against the Red Sox two days ago in a 4-3 win. He went an inning in the third, 12 pitches and a strikeout. So overall for Jackson, 25 and two-thirds, 24 hits, 10 runs, all earned, two homers. He's walked 14 and struck out 14, and maybe that does mean he's bad. He's bad. The Yankees hope so, one out. And Clark on second with a double. So it'll be Pagliarulo, Winfield, and Ward, maybe, to face Jackson. Pags one for three. He extended his hitting streak to 11 in the early on. He's got a double. Popped up. Right side. Davis, is he going to have room? Yes, he does. Two out. So last chance saloon for the Yankees is Dave Winfield. 
who was one for three. Pitch from Jackson. Popped up. Reynolds. And it's a shutout in Seattle. The Mariners win 2 nothing, And go to 26 and 21. In two hours and 32 fake minutes. Two runs. Eight hits an error for Seattle. They left on six. The Yankees, no runs, eight hits an error. And they left on six. The computer gives Scott Bankhead the digital dice player of the game, and I agree. Eight and a third, eight hits and seven strikeouts. Pretty fantastic stuff. And Michael Jackson, <laughs> picked up his first save. Tommy John goes the distance. That's a tough loss to take. Eight innings, eight hits, two runs. Both earned. He walked two and struck out one. He threw 104 pitches. M's had mojo over the Yankees. We hear in their early days. And if you're wondering about ground balls, wasn't that many. So right now, as soon as this gets posted, the Yankees and Brewers are tied for first. Let's play the rest of the Friday in baseball for you. At Wrigley Field, the Astros shut out the Cubs 1-0. Danny Darwin beats Greg Maddox. Maddox 4-7, Darwin 3-4. Eric Young, 2-4 for four with the stolen base. Cardinals take advantage of four Atlanta errors to beat the Braves 9-5. O'Neal 2-0, Zane Smith falls to 2-5. Tom Bernanski, 2-4, for four, his third home run and a stolen base. The Giants... Pound the Phillies 11-5. Scott Kareltz gets his second win. 2-7. Clay. I don't know who that is. He's 0-1. Will Clark. 3-4. for four, Seventh homer. Drives in 5. Mets 2-0 over San Diego. Sorry, Forrest. Sid Fernandez. 3-3. Three three. Mark Grant. 3-3. Three three. Randy Myers picks up his 15th save. The Reds beat the Pirates 5-4 in 11 innings. Williams 3 and 0, Jim Gott falls to 1 and 3. Bobby Bo 2 for 3 is 11th of the year and drives in 2. Cleveland 4-2 over Milwaukee. What a race in the East. You got four teams right now within half a game. Lasky 1 and 0, Chuck Krim 1 and 4, Carmen Castillo a th th is third of the year. He drives in 3, he goes 1 for 1. Dodgers beat the Expos 5-4. Up in Montreal, Tim Belcher, 5-2. Floyd Yeomans, 4-1. John Shelby, 2-2 two for two with a stolen base. The Jays beat the Shy Sox, 9-7. Flanagan, 4-5. Bittiger, 0-2. Oh, Ron Karkovice, a homer for Chicago, 2-4-2 two four, and 2 RBI. Texas shuts out Kansas City, 10-0. Or Juan Guzman, 5-3. Floyd Bannister, 5-5. Five five. Pete Incavilia hits his 15th of the year. Two for five and two RBI. Twins down the Tigers seven to six. Jeff Reardon two and two. King 0 and one. I think that's Paul. Kent Herbeck three for four is seventh of the year. Oakland beats Boston three nothing or three to one. Kurt Young five and zero. Oh. Bruce Hurst falls to four and five. Mark McGuire two for three is sixteenth and drives in two. And would you ever have guessed that the Angels would have a worse record than the Orioles? Baltimore three, California one. Jeff Ballard, his first win. Chuck Finley falls to two and three. Have a good day. Cal Ripken, one for four, his fifth of the year and drives in two. All right. Now, Memorial Day weekend schedule. Monday, you will see Oakland and Boston. You're supposed to be busy. It's okay. So that is that. Going to do a bonus game for you on for Wednesday. Let's see. Who do we want? Who do we want? Hmm. I think Milwaukee and Cleveland is the choice. So that will be the bonus game Wednesday. And then the doubleheader, the holiday doubleheader. 
the Dodgers and the Yankees, followed by the Yankees, or the Dodgers and the Mets, <laughs> followed by the Yankees and the A's. So that's what we got for you next week. I'm Ron Juckett. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day, everybody.